in that um, a lot of problems, um, the boards will be held together by nails or or something of that effect. You'll need to figure out what the what the shear stress is per unit distance. And a lot of times they'll give you a um, something like this spacing. Spacing S between the nails, and so if you if you, if, if they give us a, a spacing, basically um, the dx is going to equal that spacing, and so if you're you can say that. Um, stress is going to equal your shear force over the spacing times tau. And that's because if you have your if you have your beam, it's going to instead of a thickness of dx in the in the diagram, it's going to have a distance between nails. So the shear is going to be divided basically evenly across the across the length of the beam, and it's going to be all taken in the nails. And if the nail the nails are a certain distance s apart, um, that's going to be the spacing, and it's going to have a width of t. So st is your going to be the area of the shear plane. In here, and so we, we have H over ST going, setting the two shear equations equal to each other, equals VQ over IT. So the T's are going to cancel out, and we're going to have H over S equals VQ over I. In order to simplify what we just went over um, and to basically develop the equations in a way that uh, is useful to solving problems, I, I like to think of, um, of what we just did in, in terms of uh, in terms of these variables. We have our stress, our shear stress is going to equal our shear force over the spacing of the nails times the thickness of the beam at the shear plane. And our shear stress is also equal to uh, to the, sh the, the vertical shear due to the transverse load, which you get from the shear diagram, times the first moment of the area above the shear plane oh, um, about the neutral axis, divided by the moment of inertia of the cross section about the neutral axis, times the thickness um, of the cross section at the shear plane, and I'll first I'll um, give written definitions, and then I'll draw um, a cross section so that you can see where uh, where you get all the information from. So first we have our our shear stress. It, uh, our tau is the shearing stress in the sliding area. And you recall that the sliding area is the horizontal surface. And if there, it's a deck of cards, it's basically the cards sliding against each other as you bend the deck. And our H is the shear force preventing sliding. It's basically that horizontal force that present, prevents a piece of um, composite boards from sliding against each other. They can be nailed together or together or welded together. And we have we have S stands for the spacing between the nails. Or it can also stand for um, a distance. Say you want to find the shear stress or the shear force um, per meter of, of an I-beam or something. Yeah. 
That's where your S comes from. And you have the T, which is T is the thickness of the cross section at the shear plane. And I just don't have enough room, so I have to erase and then write up the next set of definitions. And so we got down to T. So our B is the vertical shear due to the load. And this is this is important to know that because some, sometimes you come across the problem and you want to find out how much um, What's the maximum load you can take? You know your beam can, uh, can handle the shearing stress of a certain amount, so how much can the load be? You have to realize that you need to get your load in terms of uh, vertical shear. And you know how to do that using, and you use the shear diagram. Given the load, or if you need to find the load. And so now we have Q. Q is going to equal, is our first moment, and we call it that equals Y bar A. And our Y bar. Actually, in most cases, it's the area above the shear plane, but it's actually the area upon which the force that is that causes the shear is acting. And so, generally, that's the, the area above the shear plane. But if you had a shape something like this, and you wanted to find the shear here, this is actually the entire. This is the area above the shear plane. Um, even though, even though this is, seems like it's below it, um, you would take the centroid of this shape in relation to the neutral axis, and that would be your y bar, whatever it is. It's going to be a little lower, but um, the general idea is that the, a force acting on on this part is going to cause stress right there. No matter where, you, if you push here, it's going to cause stress there. And um, the area is the area above the shear plane. And finally, we come to our moment of inertia. And depending on the shape, um, and I think it's going to be given in the book if it's a composite shape yet. You just have to go through the process. Um, and so we have that um, I usually it's going to involve the parallel axis there, so I like to write that in just so that I remember what's happening. So I, I equals the moment of inertia of a shape about its own centroid plus, um, plus its area times its distance from